Welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil 4 here at Trippy Commentaries. I'm RJ, joined by C-Dub. Let's go ahead and head into the canyon area where many Granados will be attempting to kill us. Corey, do you remember this part? I do believe so, yes. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Let's give this guy we're, a ninja uh, kick. Quite the challenge in this area. Hopefully, we have enough ammunition and we can make uh, efficient use of the melee maneuver we just saw you pull up. Yeah, definitely essential to start doing that. Uh, there's going to be plenty of guys, of course, with dynamite coming at us. And uh, this is a pretty crazy area. There's a lot to explore. Certainly going to be a lot of zombies. Let's go ahead and head down. Try to kill one of these guys with the TNT just in time. Shoot. Ah. Barely got me. Let me go ahead and retreat. That way I can uh, eat one of our eggs. Let's see how many we have left. Looks like we have five eggs. Of course, one is about to go down our throat to give us some health. And uh, we also have to reload. Now, one thing that's going to make it tough is we still only have the pistol and the shotgun. In the last episode, we decided to go without uh, the one of the automatic weapons or of course the the uh the rifle we're gonna wait until we get to the castle to get the better version oh as i get sliced in the face oh man this part's gonna be hard as hell okay this guy's throwing a dynamite which worked out to our advantage always make sure to grab all the items that people drop as well uh, let's head inside this building here now, uh, what we're doing here, Corey, is we have to get two different pieces to open up a door, and uh, they're both on different sides of this canyon. So uh, we're going to have to make our way through everything and uh, hopefully find these and get the hell out of here. Yeah, most definitely. Now, uh, you're going to have to just, like I said, man, be sure to uh, conserve our ammo here as much as possible. Um, that is one thing about the survival horror element is rather than fighting the horde of zombies, or in this case, not zombies, uh, the villagers have gone mad for some odd reason. Um, you know, there's always the option just to run past them if, if possible. Yeah, certainly not always possible. Uh, let's go ahead and use another one of our eggs here. Is It's going to happen where we're going to lose a lot of life during this portion of the game. And uh, we're actually coming up on a boss battle as well. Here's the door that I mentioned. You can see there's plenty of room for two different icons. Damn it. We got hit by some dynamite. We're losing health here fast. Uh, let's go ahead and double back. Head to the other side. Shiza. We have guys coming from all angles. Uh, there is plenty of room to maneuver, though. And uh, as Corey said, a lot of times the best thing to do is just run away. Um, C Dub, I know you said you you also beat uh, Resident Evil Five as well. Um, I had I haven't beat that game. I got all the way to the very end, so I just kind of have to finish that game off. But uh, was there any significant changes to the engine in that game and the one seen here in RE Four? Uh, you know, I'm really trying to think. Uh, right off the bat, I can't think of many. The only thing I can really um, was... think of off, you know, off the head for myself is uh, I know you have to reload in real time. Uh, now, they did update that for this game where you cannot reload in the pause menu there. Um, and you have to bring everything up as far as switching guns, everything up in real time. But I can't seem to remember everything else, Corey. I think it's really the same style. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I do know that the upgrading the weapons is slightly different because at one point, uh, after you beat the game, you can actually upgrade all the weapons to feature infinite ammunition, uh, which is good to go back in Resident Evil 5 and get those uh, complete the game on hard and professional, or veteran and professional, I think it is, the uh, two toughest difficulty rankings. Uh, I can't really think of too many other changes uh, between Resident Evil 4 and 5, but, uh, you know, 5 was certainly a spiritual successor to this, of course, uh, bringing back Chris Redfield, which I liked a lot. Yeah, definitely gotta like Chris Redfield. Um, it's interesting ending to that game, where I know he punches a boulder, so that was certainly a little bit weird. Uh, I guess Chris Redfield gained some superhuman abilities in his days uh, fighting zombies. As uh, once again, we have used 
one of these guys sticks up dynamite to our advantage. Let's try to do it again. And I think we're actually doing a pretty good job at taking out most of these guys. This guy's about to blow up. Let's steer clear. There he goes. We pretty much got them all, Corey. Uh, let's climb up this ladder. We have half of the medallion or whatever the hell it is. I guess it's some sort of key. And uh, hmm. I uh, don't see anything up here. I have to remember where the other half is. I think it might be on the roof of one of the buildings. Uh, we'll have to check out as there's a couple structures that are certainly going to have some treasure here. Some uh, things to find. Oh, here's a ladder up here. Let's climb up. Going to have to use one of our white eggs up here. Oh, damn it. A guy is about to slice us with a scythe. I uh, really can't do anything about this one, Corey. I guess maybe we could have shot him from on the ground level. Damn it. I wish we could... Uh, I'll show off uh, the ammo here. Normally, in, in the original GameCube version, you can just kind of combine these two to, to uh, reload your weapon. Unfortunately, Capcom decided not to do that here in the Xbox version. Uh, damn it. Reload, Leon. Sometimes can get a little bit cumbersome in the middle of battle. Pretty hard to get used to all the controls, as now I have everything under control. Oh, damn it, his friend is here to help him. It is a crowded uh, space up here. A little bit of a sausage party. Let's go ahead and jump down and uh, clear oh, out man. everybody and come back. Yeah, let's just let all those guys hang out up there and uh, make their way after us. That got pretty hairy pretty quick. Yeah, let's go ahead and um, I guess we'll use a, uh, a red and a green combined. And uh, let's go ahead and bust out the shotgun. We are going to have to reload this, but this will take out multiple guys pretty quickly. Damn it, as I take a pitchfork to the face. There we go. We did upgrade the power of the shotgun in the last episode. This guy is still hanging out up here. Damn you. That guy is a complete bastard. I figured he probably came down after us, but no, he was waiting. And uh, we're looking pretty uh, harsh here as far as life, Corey. I uh, kind of got my ass kicked a little bit here in this section. Definitely going to have to be yeah, careful. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, maybe go around and try to find some more. Uh, try to keep our distance between ourselves and these uh, these pitchfork and uh, other various uh, weapon and weapons and implements our distance from these guys man because they're uh, doing a number on leon here yeah i uh, will say I, i'm in the middle of a dead rising 3 playthrough which kind of is similar to this in some ways and uh, that's kind of why i'm fucking up some of the controls i keep doing the, the dead rising uh controls to switch guns and reload and everything uh needless to say it's it's not working out too well for me but uh you know, both games are made by Capcom, so you can definitely see some some similarities. We will be covering the Dead Rising series in whole for you. In fact, uh, that series, we will start off with Dead Rising 3 for the Xbox One. Um, do you see any uh, similarities between the two uh, series, Corey? I know you're a veteran of both. Uh, in some ways, yes. I feel like Dead Rising uh, is a little bit sillier. Uh, they kind of take a little bit of the action out of it, and it's more, uh, it, it has some RPG elements. I mean, obviously you level up, um, stuff like that, but, uh, you know, it's it's two games that deal with a similar uh, storyline, I guess you could say, as far as an outbreak of some sort, but uh, it's, I mean, there, it's it's almost crazy to think that Capcom made both of those games. Uh, along with Mega Man, I mean, that's pretty much three of my most favorite game series of all time. Uh, I'm definitely a Capcom fanatic. Yeah, Capcom certainly has a ton of great games, that's for sure. And uh, a lot that we're huge fans of. Mega Man is one of our nearest and dearest series here at the channel. Uh, at this the point of recording here, we've already recorded a Mega Man 2 playthrough as well as a uh, Mega Man X and Mega Man X2 playthrough. And uh, we certainly look to play through that entire series as well. But getting back to uh, Resident Evil, we looks like we actually managed to kill off all of the enemies in this area. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and search. I'm going to do a quick perimeter scan here to make sure we have everything, as uh, we can use all the life that we can get at this point. So uh, we'll check everything out. 
and we'll meet you guys at the door where we can move on to the next section. We have gathered all of the valuables here in the area. Uh, we did manage to find some herbs, thank goodness, so uh, we should be good to go into the next area. We have to combine our hexagon uh, emblem here and use it so that way we can open up this gigantic door. Let's see where we're heading next. Hmm. Looks like a different area of the village, of course. Here's another shack. Uh, there's a big door. Hmm. I don't really see anybody around, Corey. Perhaps we have killed all of the, uh, the citizens of the village. Maybe so, man. Let's, uh, let's explore around a little bit, see what all we find. Damn it. I hate it when barrels are empty. What's the point of putting a damn barrel here if it's not even going to include anything in it? Let's see what we have here. Oh, some pistol ammo. We certainly used a lot of that in that last area, so uh, we need a bunch of that. Need some shotgun ammo as well. Hmm. Let's see what we have here. You know, uh, I'm not sure if all of our weapons are reloaded, but while we're here in an area where there are no enemies, this could be a good time to go ahead and re reload all of our weapons. Not a bad idea, Corey. Let's go ahead and uh, reload the shotgun as well. Definitely our best weapon right now, so we got to make sure that has plenty of ammo at all times because uh, that, that's basically the weapon that's going to come through for you in a pinch. All right, so here's a pretty cool area. Uh, let's go ahead and switch it up to the pistol. I will say, um, you know, getting into this playthrough, it is slightly annoying not being able to... Uh, switch up the guns on the fly something that you do get to do in dead rising as well as resident evil 5 i'm sure you can do that in resident evil 6 as well so it's a little bit annoying oh you can see a treasure looks like some sort of golden mask um but one of the reasons why i really didn't care about that and i looked past this game's faults is when I got this game, it was a launch title for the GameCube. And the GameCube really did not have that many games, especially shooter styles. Um, you know, I, I was a huge fan of the Metroid Prime series. And then, of course, there was a few other games that were pretty good, but there wasn't much. So I remember waiting a long time for this game to came out or come out. I couldn't wait to finally have a new five-star title to uh, play, especially one on a mature level where... Let's face it, Nintendo was putting out a ton of games that were pretty much geared towards kids. This one was extremely violent. Uh, the chainsaw deaths in this game are crazy, as uh, we are going to have to retreat again. We're in the red. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we really don't have a ton of life right now as far as um, you know the, the bar itself. So we can really just use a single green herb and get away with it. Let's go ahead and run past. Uh, we are going to have to get into the secret room over here. Let's see. Corey, I know uh, you didn't get a chance to play Resident Evil 4 until long after its release. Uh, I believe so. The first time you played Resident Evil, was uh, was that when we played it through and uh, our playthrough a while back? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, it was a couple years ago, you know, uh, after the fact that it was actually released, but... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I had I had played it uh, on a limited basis. I mean, you know, a couple levels here and there over at a friend's house. But no, the first time I ever got to dive in it completely was whenever you and I played it. That was uh, certainly a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, going back through it has uh, made me certainly uh, crave playing it again so much that I actually went out and bought it on the PlayStation Network. So uh, I'm kind of bringing up the rear as far as catching up to uh, where we are currently in the playthrough. But uh, I figure it's worth mentioning that I am also playing along on the PlayStation. Yeah, I know we mentioned that you were going to start that up in the last episode there. So you've officially started that playthrough, C-Dub? Yes, sir. Yeah, I went ahead and purchased that as well as Guacamelee this weekend, which is another fantastic uh, title for people that are on the PS3 or the Xbox 360 to pick up if you're a fan of platforming. Yes, another game we'll be playing through. This part is pretty freaking tough. As you've got to stay crouched down. I did get blasted. The controls are a little bit confusing in this part. Uh, if we can manage to take out one of these bastards, 
Uh, fortunately, I couldn't do it fast enough. That should be enough to take out the rest. Aha! All right. Looks like a uh, dynamite has exploded back there with them. And uh, we can go ahead and move on. Let's see what we have here. Here's a door over here. Oh, fuck. Here comes a guy with a pitchfork. Oh, damn it. Got nabbed up by a bear trap. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, it does. What the hell? The guy just walked right over it. I guess the uh, bear traps do not work on the local villagers. They must have found out the secret. Let's go ahead and dispose of them. Damn it, see, that should have got him right there perfectly. Yeah, that would be a pretty cool way to, uh, you know, uh, have environments like that. I'm not sure if they added that in Resident Evil 6. But uh, if I could snatch a zombie or a uh, infected villager up in a bear trap, I mean, how cool is that? Yes. Oh, damn it. These guys are uh, pretty accurate, unfortunately. I have lost a lot of life in this episode. Stay down, bastard. Oh, another bear trap. I didn't even see that one. It was in the freaking weeds. Ooh. It's like someone conveniently placed some handgun ammo in the uh, fireplace there. Not bad. All right. Well, we are nearly dead. Go ahead and be careful as we fight our way through this part. Now, we do have that secret area right here. I believe uh, all we'll have to do is simply just shoot this open with the shotgun. That should let us at least go in here. Aha. Now, uh, I did try to backtrack to the, uh, the trader there. And uh, for some reason, he would not sell me the first aid spray. It was one of those things where it was available before I entered that canyon area. But as soon as I finished it off and went back to him, he wouldn't give it to me anymore. All right, here's some green herb. I hate to say it, but we probably should use this right away. We do have another one there that is mixed. Hopefully, we can increase our life capacity here soon enough, so that way that would be more useful. What do we have here? some money we should have plenty of cash by now uh, we just grabbed that treasure so that's gonna be worth quite a bit we could sell that uh, let's see what we have next uh oh heading down in caves some sort of a tunnel certainly does not look very sanitary here for Leon now we are lucky because I do remember this part C dub there is a uh, underwater pool that we're coming up on where you can go down and kill fish. So even though I uh, haven't really done too good in this episode, I managed to get hit quite a bit and go through quite a bit of health. We can actually go down and go fishing, so to speak, to, uh, <laughs> to actually get more health packs for down the road as we will need it. That's for damn sure. And here we go. Aha! Look at this, Corey. We have a monster right here. Perfect. A black bass. Large. Very nice. So this is a bit of a secret, I guess you can call it. There's also some grenades for some reason down here. The flash grenades will come very useful uh, later on in the game as the, uh, the enemies here are going to evolve into uh, a really crazy creature. And uh, those flash grenades will be a great way to take them out extremely quickly. So we'll want to save those up for those of you who are wondering why I'm not using the grenades too much. Uh, that's the main reason why I definitely want to save the flash grenades. So that way we can take out a certain type of enemy coming up here in the village. All right. Have we, uh, looks like we got a couple more of these uh, black bass here in this little... Uh cesspool we've got going yes hopefully leon is able to find a shower somewhere here in the town i have not seen any uh running water so he might be in trouble but uh you know he's already been injected with some sort of uh insect or or some sort of uh i don't know virus or something Corey, what did you take from that cutscene? Maybe a parasite of some sort. Uh, even though, with that being said, uh, I gotta say, Leon, man, I'm not sure I'd be eating these black bass out of this disgusting body of water. Yeah. But, unfortunately, we have no choice. 
I see a uh, booby trap here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Now, uh, I'm wondering if zombies are going to be coming after us here. This area seems a little bit too quiet. So it would kind of be nice to keep that uh, booby trap up in case the zombies come. All right, looks like we have another puzzle much like the uh, one we saw back in the farm. Let's go ahead and do it the same way. We need all the money we can get, that's for sure. A brass pocket watch. Not too shabby. It's a strange place to leave such a valuable object. Yes. Resident Evil certainly has some very uh, strange logic, that's for sure. How about in Resident Evil 1? In fact, uh, I think it's in Resident Evil 2 as well, where you can put items in a box and they'll magically appear in different areas of the mansion. Yeah, man, I would love to have uh, a device like that. It would certainly save a lot of money on luggage fees for flights. Well, guys, this next area is definitely a crazy one because in this house we're going to come across the chief make sure to stay tuned to the next episode we'll see if we can take him out once and for all see you guys there